Hi! For today's science video, I don't have an experiment for you, but I did think it would be fun to talk about another thing I've seen in my yard. In the last week, I've seen three turtles walking around my yard. And I'm wondering, where are they going and why? It's no secret where the turtles came from. This is my pond. And while it's not very deep, and the water is mucky and filled with duckweed, it's perfect for turtles. They can find lots of plants and bugs and worms to eat, and they crawl out on the bare spots to soak up the sun. And in the winter, they bury themselves in the mud at the bottom, and they sleep until it's warm again. So the pond is great for them. So if the pond is great for them, why are they leaving? First, some facts about turtles. This is a turtle. In fact, it's one of those that I took a picture of when it was crawling around my yard this week. You can tell he came from the pond because he's still got duckweed stuck on his back. Turtles are reptiles. Now that means that they're cold-blooded. They can't keep themselves warm. So they need the sun and the outside temperature to warm them up. That's why they sleep through the winter in the mud at the bottom. This is a tortoise. In fact, it's a Russian tortoise. His name's Da Vinci, and he lives with a friend of mine. Tortoises are reptiles as well, but they're a little bit different from turtles. They spend most of their time out of the water. In fact, the only thing they really need water for is to drink. They don't usually swim, and they're also vegetarians. That means they only eat plants. Turtles are what we call omnivores. They eat almost anything they can catch when it comes down to it. They eat bugs and worms and fish, and as well as plants. So that's omnivore means lots of stuff. Both tortoises and turtles are reptiles, so they lay eggs. And that is the secret to why those turtles are crawling around my yard. In fact, when I first saw them, I started calling them he until I realized, nope, they're all girls because they're looking for a place to lay their eggs. This time of the year, female turtles are looking for a nice, soft, sandy spot in the sun to dig a hole and lay their eggs. They'll cover it up and let the sun keep it warm until the eggs hatch and the hatchlings will crawl out and make their way to the pond. If you're interested in turtles, like I am, I'll attach a list of books to this video. Just click the link down below and it'll take you to a list of books that you can access from home from our eMedia site and you can read about turtles too. Of course, another thing tortoises and turtles have in common is their shell. I've got this little guy back here. He's not as fun as Da Vinci, but he does live in my house. And he has that shell we were talking about. We all know what a turtle shell looks like. And it's there to protect them. Most turtles can pull in their legs and their head and the shell covers them all up and it protects them from predators, things that might want to eat them. But the fun thing about a turtle shell is that there are lots of different stories about how the turtle got its shell. Now, of course, this isn't real science. This is what we call myths. These are stories to explain things that we couldn't understand a long time ago. So some of the stories talk about how the turtle tricked some birds into giving him a gourd to wear on his back so he'd be protected. Uh, one of the stories is about how when the creator was handing out gifts to all the animals, the turtle was so slow that he was last, and he ended up with the creator's uh, soup bowl. So he wore it on his back as a shell. But my favorite story is a West African tale about how the tortoise's shell was broken. Whenever you see a turtle shell or a tortoise shell, it always looks like different plates put together. It looks like it was broken and put back together. And this is a story about how that happened. Long, long ago, when the animals could still talk to each other, there was a famine going on. There was no food for anybody. And Turtle was so hungry that his bones knocked together when he walked. But he noticed that the birds weren't quite as hungry as the rest of the animals. And in fact, they were getting all dressed up to go somewhere special. And he asked them where they were going. And they said, we're going to a banquet in the sky. Now, Turtle was very hungry, but he couldn't fly and he couldn't get up to that banquet. So he got real smart 
and he talked each bird into giving him one feather. And he put together enough feathers to make himself a set of wings. And he flew up to the banquet in the sky. Now that turtle, he was very clever, so he also talked the birds into letting him eat first. And he was so hungry that he ate all the best food. And all that was left for the birds was scraps. They were very angry. So they took their feathers back. And there he was, stuck up in the sky with no wings to get down. And as the birds flew away, he begged them, please, will someone please take a message to my wife? Now the parrot was the last to leave and she felt bad for him. So she said she would take the message to his wife. And he said, please tell my wife to pull all the soft things out of the house, all of the pillows and the blankets and the nice comfy soft things into the yard so that when I jump down from the sky, I'll land on something soft. Well, Parrot went down and delivered that message to the tortoise's wife. But instead of saying all the soft things, she told the turtle's wife to bring out all the hard things. So turtle's wife pulled out all the iron cooking pots and all the garden tools and all the hard things she could find in her house and she laid them in the yard. And turtle was way up in the sky. He couldn't see what she was doing. He just saw that she filled the yard. And so he went ahead and jumped. And he fell down from the sky and landed in his yard on all those hard things and it broke his shell into a bunch of pieces. So Turtle and his wife had to piece his shell all back together. And that's why forever after the turtle's shell looks like a bunch of broken pieces stuck back together. That's our turtle stories for the day. Um, I did want to leave you with a couple of quick tips. One, if you're a kid, you don't ever want to touch a wild animal, no matter where it is or what it is. If you're an adult and you happen to be driving down the road and you see a turtle cross in the road, as long as it's safe to stop, you can stop and help that turtle across the road. But you always want to make sure that you put them off the road in the direction they were already going. Because if you put them back on the other side where they came from, they're just going to go across again. Because they're on their way somewhere special. They're intending to find some place to lay their eggs. You shouldn't ever move a turtle somewhere else entirely because turtles generally know where they are and where they're going. So if you move them in a car, then they don't know where they're going. And the other thing I want to show you is this picture. Don't ever touch this guy. I said it wrong again, didn't I? That's a girl. That is a girl snapping turtle. My dad took this picture of this turtle climbing out of the swamp uh, near the garden we keep at the library. She's looking for a place to lay her eggs, just like everybody else. So we just back up and leave her alone and let her do her thing. Uh, snapping turtles can hurt you, so you definitely want to leave those guys alone. All right, everybody. I hope you had fun with our turtles today, and we will see you another day. Thanks. Bye.